Hey all, here are OS Reviews. In this video, we're taking a quick look at the VSD inside Stream Dock M18 and V1. So these are macro customizable keyboards that have a small LCD screen underneath each of the buttons or keys corresponding to different commands or opening up different applications that you commonly use, which is actually pretty clever. Now this concept of Stream Docks have been around for a number of years. Companies including Elgato have been actually quite popular in creating these variants, but they've been a little bit pricey, usually north of $100 or so, and Razer's version also sits at roughly the same cost. In fact, about a decade ago they came out with a full-size keyboard that uses the same concept. So every single letter for the keyboard comprises of a small OLED screen, allowing you to configure it with different icon packs, different color effects, so and so forth, different shortcuts, even a virtual touchpad here on the side. Actually it was a pretty cool concept when it first came out. So I've always been interested in the idea of a keyboard with a built-in screen underneath, but never got to actually try one. And this company's version is much more cost effective. For example, the M18 dock is around $60 currently, and also the N1 is going to be priced at around $70. This one is also kind of unique because it can be used as a numpad depending on the mode that you're using it in. You can use it for quick calculations. In fact, the top row of the screen can directly show you uh, numbers just as a digital calculator with a built-in knob as well. allows you to use for scrubbing between timelines, zooming in and out of tools like Photoshop, making it just a little bit more versatile. And the display even supports GIFs or dynamic images as well, so it doesn't have to be only a static photo. You can also add a quick animation onto the screen. The M18 though is a bit more conventional, offering 15 keys, and doesn't have the built-in knob control nor the calculator mode, but you can still use it again to add different shortcuts in various programs that you're engaging with. In fact, supports over 400 plugins and 300 different themes that you're able to play around with. Finally, it looks like this version also has a collapsible stand that you can use to tilt it further up or down based on your preferences. It comes in two colors, either black or white. Packaging here is quite colorful. It says create your imagination. So it can be for different workflows, not only for gaming, if you are live streaming, adding those controls at a simple click, but even for general office productivity. If you're doing maybe Photoshop, video editing, you just want to add more commands and assign shortcuts onto this keyboard, it might be interesting to consider. So again, tons of different designs that they have available. And then on the inside here, we'll have just the M18 stream dock itself. Further down below here, you'll find just the standard USB Type-C to Type-A cable, which is braided, connecting it to your computer, as well as a warranty and quick start guide. As for the two-in-one calculator keyboard, we have a similar set of user guides here, as well as the actual unit in a white color this time around, as well as also a white-colored braided USB Type-C to Type-A cable, so showing some good attention to detail, color-coordinated. And taking a closer look at these keyboards, starting with a more conventional M18, and then around the parameter, looks like there's also a lighting strip, and on the very back here, we have just the Type-C there for power, and this is also where the cable will snap into place, plus some soft-touch rubber feet that prevents the keyboard from sliding around onto a surface or desk. Finally, you can also pop open the aforementioned kickstand mode just by activating this back compartment, and then the actual inside here contains another piece, which is made out of metal, where you're able to rest it onto the kickstand here to elevate it at a higher position and still hold it into place securely as you are clicking down there is no real movement and speaking of in this kickstand mode we have two different angles this is the furthest back that it goes you can also elevate it at slightly higher up angle it still feels relatively sturdy now moving into the two-in-one kind of calculator style interestingly this one actually feels a little bit more dense and heavy it's slightly more premium as you're picking it up even though it's still a plastic finish now we have that extra row on the very top which is that LCD screen that can show you numbers if you're using it as a calculator, as well as that knob on the very top, which is also crafted out of metal, feels pretty satisfying as you're engaging with it, and you can also press it down. We have access to the Type-C port on the very top, as well as the soft touch rubber feet that prevents it from sliding around. It has a slight kind of trapezoid shape to it, slightly elevating the screen upwards by a little bit. However, this model does not have a built-in kickstand of its own, so it's mostly going to be used lying flat, but overall I think as a calculator it still is making sense to be used in that mode. Alright, so starting with the N1, just plugging it in, we can see it defaults to the numpad configuration, and it has kind of this cartoon-like layout right out of the box, which is rather colorful. Screen also looks decent, considering you'll be likely using this indoors anyways, offering generous enough viewing angles in most cases. So even if we're looking at it from slightly off axis, it still seems to be mostly visible. So otherwise, it's basically just plug and play. If you're using it as a calculator, we can type in numbers here, and you can see it will 
correlate accordingly here on the calculator app that we've opened up. You can also press on the number key here to shift into some other commands, including up, down, left, right arrow keys, home, some additional shortcut buttons, delete, so on and so forth, and tap on it again to go back to the number layout. Now the knob, by the way, by default is going to activate brightness controls for the LCD screens underneath. So this is the maximum brightness versus getting dimmer, you can see, is what it's going to be like in a darker space. And so yeah, I would say overall it is doing a pretty solid job, as you can tell, not too much latency of course, since it is a wired connection. Now it might be interesting to consider a wireless option in the future, right now again it does need to be connected 24-7, so if they added Bluetooth and a built-in battery, perhaps it can be used as a separate calculator even when detached from the computer, that would be kind of cool, and then of course you can connect it when you want to use it like a keyboard. But in the current state, it does need to be connected using that cable for it to function. And as far as the buttons themselves, I would say, again, it's quite similar to any Chiclet or Island style keyboard, offering enough travel and depth to the keys for it to still feel satisfying, although it's not quite as thawky as a mechanical keyboard. Membrane keyboards in general are still going to feel a little bit more mushy by comparison, but you have decent travel depth, making it easy enough to use and press on. Otherwise, the companion software can be downloaded on their website for both Windows and Mac OS computers. And by the way, this is the same software being used for all of their macro keyboards. So it supports both of the models that we have here for testing. You don't have to download a separate app for each one, which is good to see. Here's also a test of what the keyboard sounds like when tapping down. I guess one benefit here compared to a mechanical keyboard, it is relatively quiet and it's not going to be distracting to others around you. There's also a small visual indicator, by the way, whenever a key is being pressed. You can see the screen there kind of minimizes itself as a visualization. That being said, because the LCD screen is underneath the jelly-like keycaps, there's a slight distance between the display and the actual button on top, so it's not fully laminated like we would say on smartphones or tablets. However, it's still kind of an interesting effect, I have to say, and for the most part, it's not too bothersome. And now just as reference, this is what the M18 looks like when we plug it into power, so by default it's actually showing this larger image, and it's all segmented by the tiny displays, making one larger image by stitching it together. Actually kind of a cool look as a background kind of wallpaper mode, almost like a mini display photo frame of sorts. And also the RGB mood lights become more apparent here, which are missing on the other kind of numpad calculator version, as you can tell there, having it just glow a little bit more gently on a desk surface. That being said, the display size for all the individual keys, as well as the quality of the screen there, looks mostly consistent. It's just a slightly different vertical versus horizontal orientation, offering a slightly different aesthetic there side by side. So pretty cool looking from a design perspective, and again you have the flexibility of having that built-in kickstand on this particular unit. And now jumping into the companion app here, you see that loading screen animation, and afterwards there's a quick tutorial that tells us we can drag and drop any plugins as well as icons over the virtual screen here, and they'll get pushed over to the actual keyboard. So I like that there's a bit of a setup screen here involved that tells you how you can add different scenes as well for different profiles. For example, maybe you want to use it in a certain gaming mode versus an editing mode versus a calculator or office mode, you can switch between those profiles using the companion app here, and that will change the layout of the keyboard as well. So currently we actually have both of the keyboards connected to our computer using USB, which we're able to switch back and forth between just by using this track down menu. So for example, if we want to choose the N1, we can tap on that instead, and we see the layout here on the virtual screen of the app, also switch into this portrait orientation, just like this little calculator display mode. And I can indeed confirm that the screens are capable of showing moving animations as well, which is very cool. Cool, as you can tell here, like some of these icons which are going left and right as arrow keys instead if you prefer this type of visual style. So you can customize the way the icon packs look based on your preferences. And since we have the app here open, it's recognized that we can also jump into contacting support for service, and these will pull up the corresponding application or page in their companion app, as you can tell there, so it is going to be reactive. So case in point, pressing on the plugin key opens up a separate web app. Interestingly enough, you can create an account to sign in. It's called Station Space, and from here you're able to find community members created different designs and visual effects that you can download and push over, which is pretty cool. For example, you can find some which are inspired by popular IP like Pokemon, Mario, so on and so forth, just making it feel a little bit more playful, and they're all by different community members that you're able to also reference, perhaps publish your creations as well in the future for other community members to download if they like the effect. 
So it kind of reminds me of a smartwatch dial or watch face gallery store that you're able to kind of navigate around. And the majority of these are going to be free uh, that you can find as well as some additional plugins that might be useful if you're trying to create content for YouTube, for example, a calendar, as well as a music lyric display. Again, for different apps and services that you might be using with the keyboard. Other ones which shows the CPU and GPU readings as well, so on and so forth. Plenty of these are actually quite cute and you're able to just find ones you might be more interested in. So the web app here offers that community functionality. Social media, Twitch, so on and so forth can all be referenced here. In fact, for productivity section, looks like there's also ones here for Autodesk, Excel, as well as Adobe Lightroom, again for Photoshop and editing. So the concept here feels rather open source, and I do like the approach they're going for here, just making it a little bit more versatile. And what's also neat about this community aspect is the availability of additional icon packs will only grow as more users create them, you can find additional ones to reference. For example, there's now a plugin here for Spotify controls, even Visual Studio for coding work, DaVinci Resolve, all types of different icon packs for various editor tools and software can be found as the list continues to grow. And now returning to the keyboard up top, we can also see the screen brightness more precisely. And tapping on these two hotkeys now allows you to cycle through some other controls or profiles on the keys. Now this first list which is being displayed can correspond to volume controls, for example, muting the sound versus making it higher or lower, putting the computer into a sleep mode. I really do like all these moving animations, pretty cool, as well as room for additional again, hotkeys that you can customize by dragging over using their companion app. The bottom here also tells us that we're currently on the first page as well. We can cycle through into the second page. We're also able to see the time information as well as date, current city, as well as weather information, as well as jumping into some other shortcuts like a memo pad can also be triggered here as well. Furthermore, there's a to-do list section that can also be added here as well for checking off items that you've completed, so on and so forth. So pretty easy to loop through and the app is relatively responsive. Now one thing I will say is because it is an LCD screen underneath, if you're exerting too much pressure or if you're pressing on the keys maybe with a very pointed object, for example here you can see there might be a little bit of distortion going on since it still is a screen which is underneath the keycaps. So in terms of long-term durability, I think it should be mostly fine as long as you're not too rough or aggressive with it. If you're constantly banging it or applying too much force, uh, just keep in mind that there is still a screen underneath. And then if we cycle once again, we're able to go through some even more animations and loops, such as a stopwatch and timer mode can also be found uh, directly on here as well as some built-in plug-in options, which are pretty cool, I have to say. You can see how much time has elapsed, as well as again the current date, in addition to a countdown timer as well, even though there is no built-in speaker on the keyboard, of course, but still shows an interesting animation, as well as this one here is an example of some other weather status info and other cities across different time zones, or of course, you're able to clean up that layout with something a little bit more minimalist by removing some of the keys that you aren't using, just blacking them out, and still looks quite nice just for simple media controls. It might look something like this instead, so on and so forth, based on layouts that you prefer. So there's a bit of that modularity and customization there. So here's a couple more shortcuts, for example, that also shows off the maybe computer's resources that it's consuming right now, opening up the file manager. If we press on some of these shortcuts, we can see that the task manager will now instead pop up. Here, this one is also quite cool. It can show even the hard disk as well as connected thumb drives and open up that particular folder if you just click on this section. And then once again into some popular social media applications, launching into those if you have them installed on your computer. The icons are also dynamic, including your Google account, YouTube, maybe even Gmail, X or Twitter, Amazon, so on and so forth. You can of course add other popular websites over as well. So yeah, the concept is quite cool, I have to say, and it does seem to work pretty nicely when it comes to switching back and forth pages available on the keyboard. Furthermore, as shown in this visualization, you can press down on the knob as well as twist at the same time to cycle through a few other controls, including the calculator mode. So this is actually an example of a style that also is showcasing the actual calculations here up top instead of acting as shortcuts. So again, if we do the similar calculation here, uh, we can actually see the numbers reflected up top here directly, which is pretty neat. And the times as well as divide can be referenced directly using these two hotkeys instead of being a portion of the screen. So you can choose this style instead if you prefer, or we can hold down and twist a knob to switch back into the macro keys, as well as the kind of first mode that we saw there towards the beginning. If you don't like this particular font style, you can also choose through a couple of other preset ones, including style 2, actually looks something like this, actually quite cool with the black and blue keys instead, versus a more classic layout looking something like this. Uh, the next style over is going to look 
in this pink font instead, versus the style 5 is going to be a blue color font. And briefly examining the web app in a little bit more detail, this is also where we can add additional pages uh, for transitioning and customizing further. And then here on the side is how we can customize those individual keys. Again, going to a specific website versus a mouse command like left click, right click. You can even set a text to always be typed whenever you hit on a specific button. For example, if you're always saying hello, you can assign that to a specific key and kind of save you time if you're always typing that same message out in the future just by simply clicking on it. So again, giving you plenty of granularity as well as being able to start maybe OBS Studio if you're trying to stream or record the screen on your computer as you're gaming or just doing some type of other video recording session, you're able to start a stream, change the audio source, go through different animation effects. So if we want to try a screenshot, we can just drag that over into this specific part of the keyboard and you'll see that icon also appear accordingly. And then similarly, aside from the keys, you can also customize what the knob controls will do. Instead of screen brightness, maybe you want to change the volume level higher or lower using the knob. You can set that instead. So overall, it's relatively easy to use. And again, all of your different scenes built into the keyboard's display can also be cycled back and forth or really looped at a single click just by using the sidebar here on the left and going through some of the profiles that we saw there from earlier. And the M18 works in basically the exact same way, just with, again, a horizontal orientation instead. So we have the same profiles and views in terms of widgets that you can show for time info. You can jump back and forth between different scenes as well as pages. This is the plugin showcase page versus the music console page uh, versus the hotkey option here, as well as the open files open websites. Again, similar animations there and defaults to what we saw on the N1 from earlier. Similarly, the app here also supports drag and drop directly from your home screen on Windows. So for example, if I want to have a shortcut for jumping into this app, I can directly drag and drop any of these icons inside of the app here as well. For example, uh, maybe you want to also open up Microsoft Edge as another shortcut here, so on and so forth. You're able to drag and drop these shortcuts directly inside the keyboard and the icons get copied over quickly as well. So it's actually pretty seamless and easy to use. So that is more or less it as far as our hands-on look at these VSD inside Steam Dock keyboards or macro keyboards with a built-in screen underneath each of the keys. I think it's pretty cool and rather versatile. Again, you don't necessarily have to use it for streaming or gaming to appreciate something like this. It's basically a shortcut keyboard that you can assign, again, controls for commonly used programs as well as commands onto all of the individual keys. Being able to access different controls like sticky notes as well as countdown timers world clock, weather information, so on and so forth. Actually working a little bit better than I expected. So if you're interested in a concept like these, you can check out more details in the links down below. But for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been their M18 and N1 calculator style Steam Dock keyboards.